Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can charge my phone with water. And I'd like to thank CrowdCal for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. I have a device here that has these little spoon tips on it. And you can shoot water in the side here, and when the water hits this, it makes it spin like this. And as it spins, it turns this generator here, and it can generate electricity. You can also stick something in the wheel here and turn it yourself. So let's see if we can actually get some power out of this first. So cranking it by hand, I can get around three or four volts. Let's try it with water and see what voltage I can get up to. Okay, so now I just have it connected to my hose out here. And see if I turn it on, it starts turning. Okay, let's turn it on and see the voltage we can get from it now. Look at that, 24 volts. Okay, so now if we wanna charge our phone with this, we can't use AC power, so we have to convert it to DC power. So I have a bridge rectifier here in order to convert the AC to DC. Now these two should be my positive and negative DC power now. So first let me set my water flow to make sure I'm only getting 12 volts DC. I don't wanna go above 12 volts. All right, so that should work just fine. We got 11.8 volts. Now I'm just gonna connect it to my 12 volt DC charger here. The middle one is positive here. The outside is negative. Okay, let's see if it actually charges. Three, two, one. Hope this works. It's doing it. Charging. What's really neat is you can hear the water speed change when I plug in the phone. So it should go faster when I unplug it. So a typical iPhone takes around three to four hours to charge. So that means based on the flow rate that I needed to charge my phone, I would need around 528 gallons of water to charge my phone. And because I have DC power now, I can even use this Peltier plate to freeze water. And before we continue, I'd like to thank CrowdCow for sponsoring this video. CrowdCow is a marketplace for high quality meats that creates a meaningful connection between the farmer and the customer. So how it works is you build your own box and explore the high quality beef, pork, and chicken, and seafood, and more. And you can get it on your schedule. Each cut is vacuum sealed, frozen at the peak of freshness, and sustainably shipped directly to your door. The meat we cook tastes amazing. It's different than the grocery store meat and seafood. What's cool about CrowdCow is you can actually see the farms where your meat came from. And also what I love about CrowdCow is all their meat has no growth hormones or unnecessary antibiotics. And they have a much better selection. You can get access to cuts that aren't available even at well-stocked grocery stores. Also, CrowdCow meat is environmentally friendly. Every box is recyclable and compostable. And every order is 100% carbon neutral from the field to your doorstep. So right now, new members can get $100 of free meat and free shipping if you sign up and order with my link, crowdcow.com slash the action lab in the description box below. Also, right now, if you become a member, you can get 5% off of everything that you put in your box. This promotion is extremely limited, so act fast. Now let's get back to our experiment. So it's at room temperature now. Let's turn on the water. 0.7 amps. The Peltier plate establishes a temperature delta between the two sides. So one side will get hot and the other side will get cold. And if you want the cold side to get even colder, you have to pull the heat out of the hot side. So I'm just gonna put on a piece of aluminum under my running water so I can pull some of the heat out. Ooh, look how cold it's getting. We have a minimum seven degrees Celsius now. Whoa, negative four, <laughs> negative four degrees Celsius. So that means just by using water, we can make ice on top of this. The reason that my water is pressurized anyways is because the source of the water is lifted off the ground. And so it has a high potential energy. So the original source of the energy that I was using actually came from lifting water off the ground. 
But what lifted it off the ground? The sun heats up the water on the earth and causes it to evaporate. The water evaporates into the air and once it gets high enough in the sky, it condenses. And when it condenses, the rain falls out of the sky. And the rain that landed in the higher parts of the ground has potential energy that we can extract from it to do things. And that's what hydroelectric power is. In fact, almost any energy source that we're using ultimately came from the sun. Even fossil fuels ultimately got their energy from the sun. That's because they're mostly made out of plants and some animals, and the plants get their energy from the sun through photosynthesis. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a channel similar to this one where I do videos that are a lot shorter in less than a minute. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.